Hello friends and family, my name is Brooke and welcome back to my art channel. Today I have a new interesting video for you guys that involves painting over a book cover. I've seen other YouTube artists do this before and I thought it would be really cool to try it out myself. The book that I chose to cover over is this one here called Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. I read this book last summer and I will tell you it is very good. It follows a girl as she grows up in the state of North Carolina and she actually goes through a very abusive early life. This leads into her actually taking care of herself out in the wild without her parents. And growing up lonely in the wilderness, it really made her connect with the animals and the surroundings. It also has a little bit of romance in it, but it's a very interesting take that I haven't seen in other romance novels because she has that fight or flight personality growing up all by herself. They also have a movie for this book, but I haven't actually watched it. I really need to. I just know that if it has as much turmoil as the book, I'm going to have to have a box of tissues next to me. This is a pretty tough book to get through because it is so emotional, but it is so good and very realistic. It tells a beautiful story, and I highly recommend it if you haven't read this book already. I chose this book to cover over not only because it's one of my favorites, but also because this cover is very flat and it would be easy to paint on. There's a bit of guilt that comes with painting over a book cover, but I thought this one's pretty simple, and I knew that I'd love to display something with my own personality. That being said, I do appreciate this front cover. I just really want to give it my own personal touch. So with that being said, let's design our new cover. So this is the book cover. As you can see, the front actually overlaps another page below it, which reads, the worldwide sensation. My new front cover is going to be artistic and painterly, so I definitely did not want to keep those words. It would be way too distracting from my design, so instead I decided that I'd paint both the front cover and the inside cover. I'm going to paint the inside cover first, but I'm only going to paint half because my concept doesn't really require both pages. I don't mind leaving the other page, I like the design of it, it's pretty simple and I like the reviews too. I am going to go for this sort of turquoise color on the other side. I'm going to make the front cover kind of a similar orange sunsetty color that it already is and I thought the turquoise would look really great since orange and blue are complementary colors. This shade actually turned out to be quite opaque and covered the original design with just a couple of coats of paint which I was impressed with. I wanted the turquoise color to look swampy like the water of the marsh in the story. So I added some green and blue splotches here and there to make it look like it was full of moss. I also added the shadows of some fish. They didn't turn out quite as crisp and realistic as I was hoping for, but I do return to them later and add some finer details that I wind up liking. Those little squiggles over in the corner are supposed to be tadpoles. It's okay if you never would have guessed that. <laughs> I don't think I would have if I hadn't painted them myself. I added some dark green seaweed here and there, which I think gave the water more depth along with some sparkles and shine from the light casting down on the surface of the water. When you close the book, I want it to look more interesting, so I decided to add these tiny white feathers along the side. In the story, the main character Kaya is particularly fond of feathers and the blue herons that reside in the swamp with her. It's a big part of the story, and I had to incorporate the symbolism into my design. These feathers that I added kind of look like they're just floating along in the water. It doesn't really tie into the design on this page, but I also don't think it's too distracting either. I really like how they turned out. They're kind of simple, but elegant at the same time. I was planning on just leaving the scene like this, but I decided I needed to add a little bit more detail and interest, a foreground, a middle ground, and a background with a focal point. So the first edition I made was cattails. Can I just say it was really hard to convey with paint that these were cattails and not like weird, ugly pond corn dogs. I think adding in the stems and the shading helped, but with the brushes I own and my patience, I wasn't able to get too precise with this design. I think my painting style is very messy and Van Gogh-esque. It's not realism, it's painterly and colorful, although if Van Gogh had such a hard time selling his paintings that he ripped his own ear off, I don't know what that's going to say about me and my art career, but to be fair, I'd definitely give up an ear to be as famous as Van Gogh one day. I did decide to use a black paint pen to crisp up the design, and I also used my white paint pen to add highlights. When I was done with the cattails, I began adding in a boat, as if this page wasn't busy enough for me already. In the book, Kaya grows up with nothing more than her father's boat to venture away from the marsh, and an integral moment of her life is when she steals the boat from her dad and becomes independent and free for the first time. 
Hyatt is also a very talented artist in the story. She actually winds up publishing her own guidebooks detailing the marshlands and the wildlife that surround her. So that's why I added a tiny easel, canvas, and a little hand holding a very abstract looking paintbrush. After that, the inside cover was finished. I realized that the perspective is a bit wonky, but I did my best on the fly. What I really want to focus on now is the front cover. Before I started painting, I told myself to lay down a piece of paper or cardboard underneath the page I was working on to prevent sticking and smearing, but of course I never listened to myself. So enjoy me gradually peeling the pages apart. I did wind up using a sheet of paper underneath the front cover to prevent paint getting on the freshly decorated layer below. I had a pretty clear idea in mind. I wanted the boggy marsh with the crisp sunset shining through the moss and the shrubs. Then as a focal point, I wanted Kaya, the main character, approaching a tree stump, which actually serves a big purpose in the story. You see, in the story, Kaya's love interest leaves her the feathers of various birds in a crack of the stump for her to find as a token of his affection, and I wanted to portray this essential piece of the story. I also decided to add a heron ominously looking down at her. But to be honest, I felt like I made the focal point too small. It was impossible to get any details. I also had a lot of trouble overlapping the dark backdrop with the lighter colors that I needed to be able to add the figure of Kaya and the heron. Let's just say it became muddy and abstract real quick. I actually stepped away from the piece for quite some time and then returned to it determined to finish. I like to post videos every Sunday and it was already Friday by the time that I got the courage to address the catastrophe that I'd created. Even though I was going for a more painterly style, I knew the only way that I was going to be able to save this and add fine details was with a marker. With this sharpie, I was able to add so much to the piece with just these little lines and details. I even decided to go back in with the white paint pen to crisp up the feathers of the heron and to add highlights here and there. I also decided to add the title of the book and the author with that white paint pen. This took quite a few coats to get the background covered, but it was worth it. The white lettering looks great against the dark backdrop. I also added a black line to bevel the letters and give them more depth so they stand out from the page. I added a few more touch-ups here and there, and then I was finished. There you have it guys, that is how my personalized book cover came out. It may not really be an improvement from the old one, but I do really like it, and it was pretty fun to make. I recently bought Posca paint pens, and I bet that if I ever come back to this challenge, it would be much easier to work with those, so let me know if you guys would like to see that in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please give this video a like if you enjoyed it and let me know down in the comments if you'd like to see me continue this series and paint on more book covers. Remember to hit that subscribe button because it'll let you know every time that I post a new art video. And with that being said, I'll see y'all in the next art video. Thank you. God bless. Bye.